The original title for this particular article is about Elvis's dick causing a riot. Yeah, I wrote what I wrote. It's all true, folks. That's what makes it funny. <laughs> to many people, the lasting image they have in their minds of Elvis Presley is that of a fat, sweaty guy in a crisp, immaculately pressed white jumpsuit flopping around on stage in Vegas. As a result, it's easy to forget that in his younger days, Elvis was a teenage heartthrob, to such an extent that in an appearance on one show, he was literally filmed from the waist up out of fear of the effect his gyrating penis would have on viewers at home. Well, Elvis was always a bit of a but like bad boy, wasn't he? Not really, no. That's something he lent into at the behest of like, you know, his publicists and things like that, because when he first made his foray into music, he styled himself as a good-hearted Christian boy with dusty blonde hair and kindly southern sensibilities. It's hard to imagine Elvis being like a Christian, a nice kind Christian boy. We think he always was. That's the thing, like even like during his like jailhouse rock days, like even later in his life when he was like, you know, the mega star, like, you know, performing on stage in Vegas, everything like that, he was always a really nice guy. And there's plenty of stories about him, just like, you know, just walking around, just helping people. And we've discussed before, like, his crippling habit of giving away Cadillacs. And there are other stories like Elvis learned karate and would drive around with, like, a police siren on top, helping the police. <laughs> Have you ever heard about, like, Elvis's obsession with the police? It's one of the things Elvis always asked for whenever he performed a show in a new city was a police badge from your local, like, you know, police station and to be made an honorary member of your police force which most police forces were happy to do, because, like, who doesn't want to count, like, you know, the king amongst their ranks? But, like, Elvis didn't just, like, take these badges and collect them. Once he had one, he would pretend to be a policeman to the point where, like, at night, he would just sit in his car listening to a police scanner and turn up to emergencies to help. There's, like, one story that may or may not be true, but is, like, you know, recounted by Elvis fans, like, as if it is. Well, he was like driving down the road one time and saw a couple of guys beating up another guy on the floor. Elvis pulled up, like got out of his car, assumed a karate stance, and said, let's make this fight even. Who fucking wants some? Everyone was so starstruck. They all stood up and just asked for an autograph. <laughs> so the bad boy image that we all know Elvis to have. No, young Elvis. Young. When you're talking about Elvis, you've got to draw a distinction between young cool, hip, rock and roll Elvis and fat legend Elvis. Bad boy Elvis, where did he come from? Um, it was like a combination of Elvis himself and his publicist who told him like, like, people love your music but you need to like, you know, you need to razzle your image. Like you're popular with the younger people and what the young people like is rock and roll. So Elvis makes style himself as rock and roll. Like he still sung a lot of gospel songs, which is one of like the things that like, you know, got him famous. But obviously he dyed his hair black, he started wearing tight t-shirts and jeans and the leather jacket, styled it in the pompadour that we all know, started playing guitar on stage, and most pertinent to today's topic of conversation, started thrusting his dick towards the audience like an absolute champ. And I'm assuming this is what coincided with the change in his audience as well. Yeah, because obviously Elvis was always popular with like a wide demographic, but when he like, you know, his jailhouse rock days, when he became like that, El when he became like this version of Elvis, um, that's when like, obviously his teenage girl fan base just like exploded, and he became basically like, one of the first superstars of rock and roll. So why is the dick thrusting so important? Because it eventually became a staple of Elvis's repertoire and became one of his most reliable on-stage moves and is something he is now synonymous with, hence the nickname for him, Elvis the Pelvis. And like, people might think we're making this up, but no, like, Elvis was well known for his big swinging dick to such an extent on his very first appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show, um, like a producer genuinely considered filming him from the waist up because he was wearing really baggy trousers, through which you could clearly see the contours of his massive throbbing Elvis cock. And I am not making that bit up either, because there is like genuinely stories right, about the size of Elvis's manhood. Um, one of which comes from that producer in like an autobiography or some shit, who like unironically compares it to a full-size Coke bottle. <laughs> With that in mind, imagine the effect this ginormous pendulous dong had on like, you know, these repressed 1950s like era teenage girls seeing this for the first time as he's just swinging around on stage at a thousand miles an hour. It's no wonder he became known as Elvis the Pelvis. And like this like it's rumored that one of the reasons that Elvis wore like baggy trousers for his first couple of years on stage is specifically because his dick was that big. And honestly, <laughs> he, he knew. Yeah, he knew as well. The thing is that when he changed like you know tight leather trousers, it got even worse. So he just looked like he was like smuggling a budgie down there or some shit. <laughs> 
And he was, he was obviously he was famous for it. But before we get on to like you know the meat of this article, like you know both metaphorically and literally, let's just like t take a step back and discuss the best dick thrust because Elvis is up there. But there are some other pretty good dick thrusts out there. And what's your favourite, Brad? Well, I'll start by submitting from the first Johnny English movie. Starting with a curveball, I like it. The bit at the end when there's the footage of him uh, dancing in the bathroom, there's a bit when the beat comes in for the song where he's going do, 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 where you see him thrusting in the shower. And I broke down because you can see, I'm not sure like whether it's just the fabric, but there is definitely something slamming against that fabric. There's definitely some schwang there. You can't stop it. Well, I'm gonna throw out, um, like, you know, the legend himself, Crash Bandicoot. Ooh. Because Crash Bandicoot, when you get like, you know, when you get all the boxes in a level, does like the famous Crash Dance, which involves like two straight seconds of just like rapid crotch thrusting, a move so iconic even his fucking sister ends up doing it. Which makes me believe that dance is just genetic to like bandicoots in that universe. Like all bandicoots just like instinctively know how to do the, like the most baller ass dick thrust dance ever. So you said for his first appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show that the producer wanted to film Elvis from the waist up. Yes, and this advice was soundly ignored, as it was for Elvis's second appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show. However, by the time Elvis was due to make his third appearance on the show, he was a lot more famous, and like, you know, his penchant for dick thrusting was a lot better known amongst like, you know, the more conservative elements of American society. They started getting their hell and love joy on and going, well, won't somebody please think of the children? Like, We've got, you can't have this giant, like, gyrating penis on stage when there might be kids at home watching what we assume is a, a wholesome family entertainment show. And obviously these complaints got louder and louder and louder. And producers on the show started to get a little bit worried because they thought, well, if news of this reaches advertisers, they might get skittish and, like, you know, pull um, advertising from our show. Not to mention, like, a riot might break out. And people at home might think that's hyperbole or a joke, and it is absolutely not. Riots frequently broke out with Elvis shows, which producers were obviously keenly aware of, and they thought, well, if we've got Elvis fans and people who don't like Elvis in the audience, a riot will definitely break out because those two groups are going to clash. Um, so what they did is they settled on like, you know, a solution in the form of only filming Elvis from the waist up for that performance. <laughs> Not to ruin your flow, but okay. you've missed a bit out. Have I? Yeah. Oh shit. Look at the uh, uh. Oh, the bit about effigies. Yes. Oh yeah. I, 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 I lost that. my words then though. No, it's fine, I've got them, don't worry. Fun fact people at home, before we get to the um, the end of this video and the article that I've written there, you know, draw about that curtain, um, people were literally burning effigies of Elvis when they found out it was going to make his third appearance on the Ed Sullivan show. Because, uh, you know, that's what people do to show their displeasure at something, apparently. And I can only hope that those effigies of Elvis were anatomically correct and all sported giant raging erections, because that image is just too hilarious. So as we often do on this channel, mm -hmm. we look at groups of people and pit them against each other based on a particular factor or facet of their personality or lives. Yes. So since we've been talking about various people with big dick energy... Yes. Who would you say out of everyone has the biggest and the most dick energy? Yeah, we can talk about that, but the first thing I want to clarify for yourself and the audience at home that having a big swinging dick doesn't mean you like literally have to have a ginormous penis. So I'd say Catherine Hepburn could be described as having a big swinging dick or big dick energy. Because we've talked about before, haven't we? Like she did not give a fuck and would walk around wearing like a pantsuit sharp enough to give a diamond shark paper cuts. So, and I think that like, in itself displays big dick energy without necessarily having the big dick to back it up. So like, I think Elvis, he does, like, Elvis is like, he's probably up there to be fair, just because obviously I think he just lived his life in a way that like he wanted to. Like we've talked before, obviously he physically had a large penis. Like, he would swing it around on stage to such an extent that people literally had to film him from the waist up to stop the, like, the big dick energy from escaping. And then later in his career, like, I think he died on the toilet having a shit and then would fly across the country to eat sandwiches. Like, that's pretty hard to fucking top. 
I don't know who you're going to like throw into the arena to try and face Elvis at this point. Well, the audience is obviously expecting us to slide in with David Bowie. Yeah. Yeah, didn't we want to do a skit about how much big dick energy David Bowie had? Yeah, we, can, we compared his tremendous amounts of big dick energy against the dick energy not held by Superman. <laughs> I believe that was the context. All oh, right, fair enough. We can't we do a lot of dumb shit on this channel that I forget. Yeah, David Bowie, he probably would like enter the big dick wars and would do all right. Because obviously, one, he reinvented himself so many times. So I think each iteration of David Bowie would have its own entrance into the, like, let's say it's the Royal Rumble. Mm. You know, let's say it starts with Elvis. Like David Bowie would be like uh, Mick Foley, who entered the Royal Rumble multiple times under his different personas. Like he went in as like Cactus Jack and... Um, uh, Mankind and Mick Foley and Dude Love and all that. So he used to go in multiple times. I think that's what David Bowie would do. Yeah. Like, he'd go in as David Bowie, then he goes like Ziggy Stardust, and then he goes like the Thin White Duke. And that's how he'd compete. Do you reckon Elvis would just knock him out of the ring with the dick thrust? I think he would, yeah. Because, like, David Bowie wasn't really known that much for, like, you just know, he's getting bald. Yeah, he wasn't known for his physicality, really, was he? He was more known for just, like, having that like, commanding presence. So, who do you reckon possesses enough big dick energy to put up a fight against Elvis? They don't have to put up a fight against Elvis to knock him out. They don't necessarily need to possess more big dick energy than Elvis. They just need to be able to, like, knock him out of the ring. And I'd say you need a big man to do that, because obviously Elvis was a bigger dude later in his life. So, I'm going to put forward Marlon Brando. Who we discussed before did not give an ounce of a fuck. Like, he would like break into his own fucking fridge and then take bites out of giant wheels of cheese and would have his mates throw Burger King over his fence when his wife's put him on a diet. Like, it doesn't matter like, how much karate Elvis knows, you don't stop that much girth running towards you. And if you've got like, a big man, obviously you want to have the clash of the titans. So you'd have to bring in Orson Welles. Someone tries to put up a fight again and just tells him to fuck off. Yeah, and you're like, that's not what Orson Welles would do. He'd walk in and he'd just say, fuck off. And then obviously, Marlon Brown would go, all right, Orson, and walk straight the fuck out. But then obviously you'd need someone who wouldn't fuck off, who wouldn't like, listen to Orson. So then you'd get like Diogenes rocking up and he'd come in on like his throne of dogs, just like being carried in like fucking like a sultan or some shit. And he'd walk in and he literally has his dick hanging out. And he gets inside his big pot and he uses that and to slap fucking Orson out of the ring. I think to satisfy the memers out there as well, seeing as you're wearing a shirt for it, what about Shaggy? No, he's sh recently evolved to have big dick energy. I don't, he doesn't have big, he's transcended beyond needing it. Right. Like, because obviously he's like, he has his own power source, presumably from the same dimension that Cyclops' like punch lasers come from. So I assume that Shaggy doesn't need big dick energy because he's gone beyond it. And as well, he would not like bother himself with like, you know, petty mortal squabbles. Because he's, he's just sat there like Shao Kahn a million miles above the earth, just like observing this like fray with like absolute disdain. Oh, that shaggy thing came out of nowhere. Fuck, have you heard as well like they're trying to get him to be in Mortal Kombat? I, I heard them trying to push for it, yeah. They're trying to get him in Mortal Kombat. And then oh, these are like, fuck it, I, I'm so annoyed about this. Like Negan from The Walking Dead is in Tekken 7 and not Mortal Kombat 11. A character known for doing one thing, that's bashing people's skull in with a baseball bat, is not in Mortal Kombat. That's bullshit. Fuck that. 